a reminder to everyone, again, please silence any cell phones you have. And again, we will be taking all questions at the end. Thank you all for coming today. I'm Detective Lieutenant Abram Markowitz of the Ulster County Sheriff's Office. To my right is Ulster County Sheriff Juan Figueroa, followed by Ulster County Chief Assistant District Attorney Mike Cavanaugh, followed by Ulster County Executive Pat Ryan. Also joining us to my left, Under Sheriff Eric Benjamin, Captain Robert Appleton of the New York State Police, and Chief Gerald Cocosa of the Town of Marlboro Police. The purpose of this conference today is to announce the recent arrest of Monique S. Dibble, 33 years old of Marlboro, for several counts of sales of heroin in the Marlboro area. She is also the first person in Ulster County's history charged with criminally negligent homicide for allegedly selling heroin to a platykill woman uh, last May, which resulted in her overdose death. I'll be speaking in more detail relative to this investigation in a moment, but for now I'm going to turn this over to Sheriff Figueroa. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, as you know, this epidemic uh, affects uh, all walks of life. Um, this one kind of hits home uh, for me when I called up uh, when we spoke to the parents uh, yesterday. Uh, she told me, and uh, her name is Maria Burma, and uh, she's the mother of, of the victim in this case, and she told me that she had lost hope. Um, and I expressed to her the importance of what law enforcement does and what we uh, as a community can do um, when, when we work collaboratively. And uh, you know, there, there is hope um, for the families that are out there if, if they want help and they seek help. And that's what law enforcement is for. Um, we have a great team that collaborated in this case. Um, the New York State Police, urgent, Task Force, the men and women of the Ulster County Sheriff's Office, and the Ulster County District Attorney's Office. And uh, my, uh, I commend all of them uh, for what they have done uh, to include the Marlboro Police Department as well. And uh, I just wanted to add um, that in this case, uh, like in many others, uh, we all have to work uh, collaboratively, uh, you know, to make these arrests, that these drug dealers that are putting that poison out there uh, need to be stopped. And uh, thank you. So this investigation began a little after May of last year when uh, Selena Maldonado, a 25-year-old woman from Platykill, overdosed and died from a heroin, uh, from an amount of heroin she had purchased. Uh, not long thereafter, Urgent began to receive information that she may have uh, purchased this heroin from Miss Dibble. Uh, it took several months for Urgent, after they began their investigation, to uh, develop a way to infiltrate Miss Dibble's uh, drug sales network. Uh, early in the year this year, we were successful in doing so, and from that point began uh, periodically uh, purchasing uh, quantities of heroin and cocaine from Miss Dibble in, in Marlboro. What's one of the things that's noteworthy in this case is in at least three instances of the seven sales we made with Miss Dibble, uh, at least three instances, the heroin that was purchased. Uh, tested, field tested positive for the presence of fentanyl as well. Uh, those were based on preliminary field tests and certainly uh, more, more detailed examinations uh, are being done by the state police lab and we're awaiting those results. Urgent was also able to obtain evidence that we feel directly links Miss Dibble to the sale of the heroin that Miss Maldonado overdosed and died from. Two days ago, Ms. Dibble was taken into custody and charged with the felony of criminally negligent homicide, as well as several felony counts of criminal sale of a controlled substance in the third degree and criminal possession of a controlled substance in the third degree relative to the amounts of heroin and, and cocaine that were previously purchased from her. 
She was arraigned in the town of Marlboro Court and remanded to the jail in lieu of $50,000 cash bond or $100,000 secured bond. Uh, again, as we mentioned before, this is the first time in the history of Ulster County that such a charge of criminal negligent homicide has been brought against an alleged drug dealer for selling uh, narcotics that ultimately resulted in an overdose death. As mentioned before by the sheriff, Urgent was assisted throughout this investigation by the New York State Police Violent Gang and Narcotics Enforcement Team and members of the Town of Marlboro Police as well, among others. At this time, I'm going to turn this over to Chief Assistant District Attorney Kavanaugh to speak more about the, uh, the judicial end of this case. Okay, thank you all for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. This is a very important matter that we're dealing with. And for our purposes, uh, District Attorney's Office, I want to use this opportunity, uh, this press conference, with hopes that we're going to put drug dealers on notice that if you sell fentanyl in Ulster County and that fentanyl results in someone's death, you're not only going to be prosecuted for selling the fentanyl, but you're going to be prosecuted for homicide when, that, when the facts bear that out. And I want this message to get out loud and clear, and this case is going to be how we do that. We all know we're in the midst of this opioid epidemic, and law enforcement and first responders have, have all too often responded to uh, a call for help, an emergency. And when they get there, they get, arrive only to find out that it's just another, it's another overdose. It's another death. Uh, we see that all too often here. And every single time this happens, a, a family is left devastated, wondering why this happened, agonizing about what they could have done differently or what they did wrong, wondering if there's anything they could have done to stop it. And they're searching their souls to fill a void that will never be filled. And everybody in this room in the back here has responded to too many of these calls. We often discuss overdoses and, and the tragic families and uh, the tragedies that these families have to endure as statistics. And for some of us, it's a, it's a self-defense mechanism. We don't want to deal with the reality uh, of what is really behind these deaths and the pain that it causes. And I'm telling you, Selena Maldonado is not just a statistic. She was a beloved daughter, girlfriend, and a friend to many. And her death is tragic. And it was caused by her addiction to opioids and the exploitation of that addiction by Monique Dibble. We have tried so hard to turn this epidemic around. And it has been a countywide cooperative effort. We've dedicated addiction recovery experts, social workers, treatment providers, judges, community and government leaders, and law enforcement who are all working together to try to find a solution and to treat those addicted to opioids. The Ulster County District Attorney's Office, as well as law enforcement, has always been and will continue to be strong advocates for treatment-based alternatives to incarceration for nonviolent drug-addicted offenders. We've referred hundreds of people to drug court and other drug rehabilitation programs with hopes that they will overcome their addiction and return to the community as prosperous members. However, we in law enforcement have a unique position where we can go directly after the drug dealers as well these for-profit drug dealers who are literally poisoning people to death. This has been our mission, and we have vigorously investigated, arrested, and prosecuted these cases for years. With this case, we're doing something that hasn't been done in this county yet. And that is to hold a dealer accountable for causing the death of one of the addicts that they so easily serve. This is something we've attempted to do for years, but you have to understand a case like this involves incredible amount of man work, manpower, effort, great police work, and quite frankly, a little bit of luck. And that all fell into place with this case. It was a great job by Sheriff Figueroa and his team, the urgent task force, the New York State Police. As the sheriff said, this was a collaborative effort. And without the work of everybody filling in, doing their part and making this happen, we would not be here right now. We would not be in the position we're in and that is to hold someone accountable for peddling poison causing the death of somebody and charging them with homicide. So in closing, this case is about doing justice. Justice for Selena and her family, justice for this community. Let it also serve as a message to profit-seeking drug dealers. If you peddle your poison in this community, you will be held fully accountable for not only your actions, but for the consequences of those actions as well. Now I want to take an opportunity to introduce County Executive Pat Ryan, and I would like to commend him 
because he has just stepped into this position and he has already been a huge advocate fighting along with law enforcement and trying to do something about this. And he is to be commended. Second round. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to take a, a brief moment. I know, I believe we're going to hear from a representative of the, of the family of the victim, because in this case, a, someone struggling with addiction, as was said earlier, is being exploited by criminals. And, and they are, in this case, I believe, a victim. And so I just want to take a moment on behalf of all the people of Ulster County and send really our, our deepest condolences uh, for the loss and the ripple effect to, to the family, to friends, to the entire community of Platakill and others that were, were affected. Many of you have heard me say this, Ulster County has a distinction that we're not proud of right now. We are the worst county in New York State in 2018 for opioid overdose deaths per capita. We have to recognize that that's the reality that we're facing right now. And we have to make everyone aware of that and mobilize these exact kind of efforts and these kind of team efforts to tackle the epidemic. It's, it's absolutely one of my priorities. We're, 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 we've uh, secured significant funding over $3 million over the next three years on the prevention and treatment side. But on the supply side, we have to be extremely aggressive as we were in this case. And I wanna make it clear in Ulster County, we have zero tolerance for anyone who would brazenly flood our streets with poison for their profit and take advantage of some of the most vulnerable members of our community. And I think what, what we're, we're all saying here with a loud and clear and uh, coordinated voice is we can't allow that to happen in Ulster County. We will not allow that to continue to happen in Ulster County and it's gonna take all of us to achieve that. So um, I appreciate you all being here and I really uh, thank you all for the, the hard work that you've done and the work uh, that the, the district attorney's office will continue to do to secure justice for the family and for our whole county. Um, and I'll, I think I'll pass it back to, to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, County Executive. Uh, and I appreciate your efforts as well. Uh, everyone that's up here uh, has a career of dealing with these, with these type of situations. And action is what um, the folks in our community want. And action is what they're going to get. And today is just... Uh, a preview of what's going to happen here in Ulster County. So thank you. At this time I would like to call forward Selena's mom, uh, Maria Bermo, who will deliver a few brief remarks. Burmo and Maldonado families, I want to thank all the men and women who were involved in apprehending this woman. My daughter passed away, Selena, 15 months ago, and I had lost hope. But the men and women of our local law enforcement agencies and the community relentlessly worked day and night, unbeknownst to me, to bring this person, this woman, who befriended my daughter. She sold my daughter a lethal dose of a drug that instantly killed her. These drug dealers who are out there preying on the vulnerable, who become addicted to opioids or any type of drug for that matter, need to be punished properly. They need to pay for their actions. Nothing can bring I Selena back, but I find peace knowing that one less drug dealer will be off the streets and hopefully this will send a message to all the other drug dealers out there who think that they can get away with selling poison and killing people who suffer from addiction or mental health disorders. Again, from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you all 
Our beloved Selena can now rest in peace to all the other parents who have lost a child, their families and friends. I want them to stay vigilant and never give up hope and have faith in our judicial system that justice will be served. May God bless you all and all the loved ones that we've lost. Thank you. this time, we will open the floor up to any questions you may have. Sir. You mentioned the supply network. Could you go into some detail about that? How big is it? Where is this stuff coming from? How is it getting into the county? If in reference to this particular case, it is a, it's still an ongoing investigation. Uh, but of course, most of these drugs come from uh, the, the southern part, uh, you know, uh, south of the border, or from even China. I mean, we don't have the specifics of where they actually come from, but that's the usual trend that we see. I, I couldn't hear you, south of the border, or what? China. Or China? In this particular case, this is an ongoing investigation. We don't have the specifics of where the drugs came from, but in most instances, these drugs come south of the border or from China. Sure. Is uh, charging people, in this particular case, the person who's been charged with homicide, is this a change in policy or is this something that uh, the office has been trying to do in the past? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, this is actually a, an ideal situation. We have been trying to do this for a long time, uh, but there are a lot of uh, mechanics involved. In, in developing a case like this. It's not simply proving that the sale took place. We have to prove uh, a number of other things that are not always easy to do. Uh, and like I said, this case involved not only the, the collaborative efforts of all these different <coughs> agencies, it also involved a little bit of luck. We had luck in this case, uh, and that's why. So no, this is something that we have wanted to do for a long time, and we will continue to try to do this. It's not a change in policy at all. Uh, it's just a matter of of uh, everybody pulling together and making it happen in this particular case. I wish we could have done it sooner. I wish we could do it more often. Um, but every opportunity we get, we will do it. And we'll hold people accountable and charge them with, with homicide. Yeah. Um, how much does this have to do with the federal uh, being in the heroin? I mean, I'm not familiar with the drugs, and maybe everybody else knows this. I don't know. But um, she overdosed. Did she overdose because there was fentanyl? Please. Uh, fentanyl uh, was a huge factor. Yes, fentanyl was a huge contributing factor to why she overdosed and ultimately passed away, uh, and it is a major factor in why we were able to charge her, charge the defendant with homicide. Yes. Um, if if you had done this case and there had been no fentanyl, and she had still overdosed, would you still be able to? Probably not. The, not the arrest for homicide. No, probably not. Uh, the fentanyl is the uh, one of the key reasons we have such a, an epidemic here, and the overdoses uh, resulting in, in death. So without without the fentanyl, it would be difficult to prove that the defendant was aware of a risk or ignored a risk uh, and acted unreasonably, because a lot of people take heroin on a, on a regular basis. Addicts use it all the time. It doesn't lead to overdoses as frequently as uh, people who ingest fentanyl. And is there, um, did the defendant cut the heroin with fentanyl herself, or did she get it from her supplier with fentanyl in it and she didn't know, or do you uh, know about that? As, as the sheriff said, it's an ongoing investigation, um, and we are working to sew up any loose ends. Uh, we have some information about that. However, at this point in time, I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to share. But if overall, we can say that fentanyl is, is a big uh, contributor to people overdosing from heroin? Without question, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes. What is the thing about criminally negligent homicide that is like the, the crux of that issue? What makes it criminally negligent homicide? Well, selling drugs in and of itself uh, 
can be a negligent act. It can be, it's obviously an intentional act. However, when you sell heroin that is laced with fentanyl, that is a high risk that it could result in someone overdosing. Right. And it's either being unaware of that risk when you should have known or ignoring it. And in this particular case, she's been charged with, with not being aware of that risk or ignoring it, and she should have. A reasonable person would have foreseen the risk that that heroin laced with fentanyl would cause somebody's death. She chose to ignore it. So it's almost like intent. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you knew or should have known. Knew or should have known. Right. Yes. Uh, one other question. Uh, do you believe this was pharmaceutical uh, fentanyl or homemade fentanyl? Uh, I don't know the answer. Um, I'm guessing uh, almost all of it is, is some sort of pharmaceutical. Right. Um, but I, in this particular case, I don't know. I mean, wouldn't it be interesting to tag for every company that makes fentanyl or some other potentially deadly substance to tag the substance with their some signature chemical that shows it's from them? It's a very interesting idea. It would be. Yes. Like they do with nuclear radiation, they know. You're getting way out of my uh, way. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious to see the tops reports coming back from State Police. Is that we do have the tops? We have that. Yes. And the analysis of the substance. There is fentanyl. There is opioids. Right. Okay, I'll follow up on that. Okay, got you. So just to piggyback on that, one other, uh, one other footnote. Uh, as was stated several times before, this this investigation is still continuing, and should we develop evidence to suggest that there are any other fatalities that have occurred that can be linked to Miss Dibble, then we will, in, com in conference, in consultation with the DA's office, if we reach that level of, of evidence, then additional charges may be filed. Uh, that is, again, that, that is part of what is still being investigated, and this is by far not, this case is not finished. Any other questions? Okay, then this concludes our press conference. Thank you all for attending.